And, and this point is also very important, to think globally and to see always the level of the world, to think future, but also to think uh, globally, and, and this is very, 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 very important. And the role of information, information is something very, very important. And, and also, another value that I wanted to, to, to raise with you is awareness. Because information, knowledge, we are aware. We want to do something we don't want to do, but we have to know, we have to be aware. But to be aware about some situation and use sometimes some feeling of guilt. What can I do? You know, it, it's also some question mark in, in my presentation. Another very important question. We speak a lot about human rights. This is very important. It's a big commission in the United Nations in charge of human rights. We know that uh, it's not very successful in, in, in many, many, many countries. And also right to health. I will arrive to health. We have technique, we have everything. Why will I have a treatment available here and not uh, in the south of the hemisphere? But in the same time, right to health, we can say that health is public good. It's a public good health. It's a big legislation on, 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 on the right of health. But how, how we can, and I think it's a big question within a university, how to manage public good intellectual properties and cost. Because cost, health, health has a cost. We know. You have seen the debate in your country, but all around the world. Health has a cost. But health is also public good. How to, to manage this big, this big paradox? Where we are today, I wanted to make a little also around now to speak about health, uh, some history. We, we had in the, pa in the past big epidemics, outbreaks of many, many diseases, but it was a sort of passivity because no information, we didn't know, it's far away, we are not involved. Today, we face a lot of emerging diseases that will come back on this one. And I want to tell you that for me, and according to my experience, AIDS, HIV AIDS, has a change a lot of things. We can speak about the world, and I say the world, before HIV AIDS and after HIV AIDS, and I will explain why. HIV AIDS, beginning of the 80s, I remember I received the first patient in my department in Paris around 81, 82, 82. We didn't know three, four deaths every week, we didn't understand. No immunity at all, big infection. What is this disease? We have seen people coming from Africa, com people from the uh, gay community. We didn't understand nothing. Okay, and step by step, discover the virus in 83, 87, the first antiretroviral drug, AZT, plus some other drugs, and okay, now it's not, uh, not going to die uh, each time with AIDS. But what we didn't know, it was a situation of this disease in the rest of the world. It was well known in the United States, in France, in Europe, in Germany. And at the end of the 90s, end of the 90s, we had treat therapy, antiprotease, antiretroviral drugs. The cost, the cost of the drug, where, and is the same today around only the drugs, 12,000 US per year. Only the drug, to treat a patient. And it's not a three-day treatment. It's not one month treatment. It's permanent. When you start a treatment against HIV, AIDS, it's a chronic one, up to now. It's like that even today. 12,000 US. When you know the situation of uh, Africa, for example, who can pay public, private, who can pay 12,000 US only for the drugs? And at the end of the 90s, we have seen that uh, African continent, we had 35 
million HIV positive people. 35, without any treatment, with a mortality rate, and, and all, fabulous, huge. And no availability for the treatment. This is a situation, you say, the drug are in the north and the patients are in the south. And the South African government, I know this is somebody from pharma industry, tell you this story. I want to be completely transparent with you. In South Africa, they have decided to say, okay, we don't recognize intellectual properties. We will manufacture our own generics, uh, fixed dose combination, because it's impossible. We have a lot of people, millions of people with HIV. And it was an emergency. And 39 big pharma, not Sanofi, but okay, 39 big pharma, they have decided to make a law suite in South Africa. We have some international law in terms of business, in terms of recog uh, recognition of intellectual properties. But this is a case where you, okay, you are okay in terms of justice, but wrong socially, ethically. How to make a law suite, a trial in a country where you have six million HIV positive. And if you remember, all the press, the newspaper, radio, TV, all the newspaper says the bad people from pharma industries, they don't give access to antiretroviral drug in South Africa, in Africa. It was a shame. It was a big, big, big mistake from the big pharma. And they withdrew the trial. Why I tell you that? Because it was the beginning of a big, 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 big change. Big change. Why? First, the pharma industry, strong awareness to say, okay, it's impossible to go against the general public in terms of image. Uh, even if the responsibility is not only pharma industry, we are an actor of health, we have to do something first. The second one, the government, the richest government, the G8, you, you know the G8, now the G20, but the G8, the eight richest country in the world. 2001, Genova in Italy, they have decided to create the global fund against TB, malaria, and AIDS. And they decided to put money, a lot of money. And for the first time, for the first time, the richest country in the level of the president, the prime minister, they have decided to put money on public health in developing countries. It was not the case before. It was unacceptable to let a full continent and billion it was a global fund. And now, I can tell you because I'm in the middle of the, this system, all the international meeting, international conference, they put health on agenda, on the agenda. It's a big change. Health became really a very important challenge. And the richest country, a new country, has decided loan is number one contributor to the global fund, but PMI, Mr. Bush, President Malaria Initiative, PEPFAR, 15 billion US for AIDS, 15 billion for malaria, and many other governments, they have decided to put money for this disease, because it's unacceptable. We had a technical solution. And you see, pharma industry, strong awareness, G8 Global Fund, the government, and the international law, the WTO, World Trade Organization, they have, to, they have decided to change the rules about intellectual properties. It was the Doha Agreement at peak agreement to say, in case of emergency, we can overcome intellectual properties if you have an emergency and to make some generics. This is a voluntary license of product or compulsory license according to the situation, accepted by pharma industry and accepted by the country, accepted by every. It's a big, big change. And, and last ID, private actors. Okay, you know, everybody knows, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mr. Gates, from his own pocket, 
He has decided to put 30 billion US dollars on the table. 